Hello, good evening, welcome everybody. Michael here. Hello everybody, Rupert here. <laughs> Uh, really great, as always, to uh, see you in in the chat, folks, and that you're ready waiting for us. I'll tell you what, it knocks our socks off, off every time, you know, because you're all saying hello and where you're from, and it's ridiculous that you're from all over the place. I'm so, it's, so, it's, so it's so wonderful. Um, so welcome, as I said, uh, to you all. Um, many names I know, and quite a few that I haven't seen before. So that's yeah. uh, excellent and, um, and well cool, yeah. So as you know, uh, tonight is about, we, uh, most Thursday nights, we've been, recently, we've been slowly going through our film Standing With Stones, uh, which uh, neatly divides into seven parts. Tonight is part four, where we did our lap of, uh, lap of Ireland. So uh, yes. got that coming up and... Um, yeah, it should be fun. There's a few stories to tell behind the scenes there, aren't there? <laughs> there are a few. There are a few, yes. What yes. are you so Happy sorry days. for, jo Joan? It, you're here. No need to apologise. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Very glad to see you. You're, you're barely late. Barely yeah, late. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, we got a dislike before we even started. <laughs> Do you know what? I think... Uh, I think some people just like their presence felt, don't they, really? <laughs> uh, we hope yeah. they have a lovely evening. I mean, I, I'd understand if we'd been late or something, but really? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they tuned in just to say they didn't like us. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's say a few words. I'm sure most of you there already know about this, but um, we've lately decided uh, uh, we've bowed to the pressure. <laughs> Uh, not that we're reluctant in any way whatsoever, but we, uh, it has been decided that we shall be making Standing with Stones 2. We've got a general mm. idea of how that's uh, going to go in terms of the story we tell, but that's got to be uh, uh, developed. So, interestingly, I'm mean, really encouraged by this, is the fact that you know, quite a few people have already been asking, well, how can we do that? How can we help you make Standing With Stones to, um, you know, from a monetary uh, point of view? And the fact yeah. is that it'll be, we, we will crowdfund it in parts, uh, and it'll be a way before we actually do a Kickstarter campaign where you, where you can put, you know, lump, uh, single um, donations if you're so inclined. <laughs> but in, uh, what will happen in, in the meantime um, it is we will continue to advertise our uh, Patreon campaign, which you know enables us to do this, enables us to do uh, the regular flash things and the podcast and the interviews that we do and anything up, uh, else we, we do that pops up on... Uh, uh, YouTube and so forth, and at the same time, uh, do the development work, you know, and principle uh, uh, establishing, um, you know, the, the principle of creative work before we actually start filming uh, that needs to be done with Standing With Stones. Uh, so yes. anybody asking that question, how, how can I s support you? Two, two ways. You can support us by supporting us on Patreon, or you can hang about and wait until um, we put up a, a Kickstarter or, a you know, uh, we, we haven't chosen which platform, um, the, uh, you know, the, the main bits. And it'll probably be in several parts when that comes. Do you know what, Ruth, I was thinking earlier today? <laughs> I'd be a very happy boy if we get this done by the time I'm 70. Good grief. I hope it happens before that. Well, it's not that far <laughs> off. It's far enough. Well, it's three and a half years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I, 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 I agree. Like I said, I'd be very happy if, it's, if it does happen before I'm 70. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, indeed. Uh, <laughs> yes. Although, it, well, it, hey, it's going to keep us fit, that's for sure. I think yeah. uh, one interesting thing about uh, setting out on this project now is that the, the first time we did it, um, it <laughs> apart from the fact that it was the first time that we'd worked together on a on a movie and you know and it, it was all fine it was perfect but but the thing is that we did an, an awful lot of stuff just 
by virtue of the way that we were working it, we did so much stuff by the seat of our pants. Yeah. And uh, and the thing is that that's not going to happen this time because, you know, last time we had Thrupman's Hapney to do the whole thing with, and so we were living very much hand to mouth. And this mm. time, because, you know, we, we've said before, we'd promised our wives we would never do that again because it was such a strain, uh, yeah. of, you know, on so many levels. So, the, so the, the thing was that, Having said, well, no, this time we will only do it when we've got a proper budget and we can really do the whole thing properly. So, yeah, the whole thing's going to be a lot more nailed in uh, in as much as we won't be having the experiences that we had before where, you know, where script is already in place and then you arrive mm. somewhere on the day and find that what you've read in the books is just wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, that that's not going to happen this time. So, much. so uh, you know, it's, <laughs> well, yeah, okay, maybe in Kazakhstan, if we can get to Kazakhstan. Um, oh. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, we'll see. It's um, it's going to be good. Anyway, it, it, the the best way, if you want to keep on the inside line, uh, you know, inside track as we as things go on and uh, things develop, you know, so that it's the great thing about having the. You Patreon folk is the feeling, you know, we've got a team that are enjoying the journey together. So, I, yeah. I mean, I hope hope you are. I mean, we've hardly we've hardly begun at all, um, but you'll be kept, you know, in line with our thinking over the next months and mm. years. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid yeah. Yeah, that's the way I, it'll I, go. I'm just, I'm just going to answer Eric's comment here. Eric has said, "Will SWS two cover more of Europe and or Middle East?" Yes. Um, yes. It's just yes. Uh, it's one of the sort of frustrations at this end of things is that there are an awful lot of sites that, in an ideal world, you know, if nowhere was war torn, then there are so many sites that we would like to show to illustrate certain points in, uh, you know, in cultural progression uh, uh, across. Uh, right the way actually from well certainly anatolia and coming on yeah. uh, on west but but there are a lot of places that you just dare not uh you know i mean mm. there are sites for example i would love to go and visit a few sites in yemen but that's just not gonna happen mm. um you know not least mm. of all if we tried to do a drone shot we probably wouldn't be out of prison for the next 10 years you know yeah, yeah. um so, you know, we have to be a bit sensible about the countries that we visit. But, yes, we are planning on illustrating uh, uh, quite a number yeah, of the points. The earlier steps of the north-west yeah. European megalithic culture. Yeah. 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 Jane yeah. Cheshire, whereabouts in South Warwickshire are you? Can't be far away from where I am. Anyway, uh, yeah, Syria, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you see, it is so yeah. sad, isn't it? I'm just going to wave to Hallie again. It's nice to see you twice in one day. What's yeah, um, yeah. And no, we. I, but yeah. but that said, I don't think we'll be extending that far back in time that we include it because it's not really the same culture. The, the stuff that went kicked off, you know, Gebekli Tepe and all that. That's completely out of. Uh, oh, you know, Tepe. Did somebody mention uh, Gebekli Tepe? Yes, yes. That, yes that's um, too too far back for it's that red inclusion in this. Coming yeah. up. Um, you know, wonderful. <clears throat> although it is, it's mm. uh, in its in itself, it's an irrelevance to uh, the cultures that we're looking at in uh, in you know Neolithic or certainly Megalithic culture in Neolithic yeah. and Bronze Age Britain. And Europe, yeah. uh, it's just uh, it's in, in terms of a con continuity. Yeah. There is no continuity, and there's you know, mm. it's a it's a different um, mm. yeah. Anyway, uh, mm. sh should we should we have a look at this um, funny old film then? Let's have a look at this funny old film. I'm just going to say yes to Rotella, Mortadella, just yes, yes, and <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, we'll see what we can do. All right, yes. and uh, you'll you'll be among the first to know when when we do. Let mm. us go, I yes. say. Let yes. <laughs> let mm. us go to if I can find the right file. There we are. Uh, let us go to Ireland. Are you Let's ready? Go to Ireland. 
I'm ready. Five, four, three, two, one, and... Yay! Mm -hmm. This really is the land of fairy tales. Any turn in the road might reveal a sight so beautiful that your heart skips a beat. It's hard to know where to start. Until you see Carl. I'm just going to uh, stop it there because there's a few things to say about uh, about that beginning there. Um, what should I mention first? Um, hey, I think uh, I somebody just, I could listen to that piece of music all day long. To be honest, yeah. Well, um, it's not a piece by mine. That's one of two pieces that I didn't write uh, for this uh, for this f film. That you came didn't about. Write Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> And that would be a story, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, no, that was uh, written and performed um, by, um, what's his name? Uh, Eduardo Tarillonte. And I found that piece of music, and I got in contact with uh, Eduardo for permission to use it, which he uh, uh, granted to us in perpetuity. Um, interestingly, what you, what I was seeking for, I thought I was going to write the music. I thought I, there's got to be something special to you know, get us into Ireland. And uh, I we've got to hear one of my extraordinarily favourite instruments, uh, the Ellen Pipes. And it, when they're played well, they, they, it, I, I, there must be the Irish makes in me. You, makes it makes me cry. cry. Makes me cry. It, it, it's, it's incredible. So I thought, well, because uh, a lot of the music that was in uh, Standing With Stones, the, the, the main theme, because I'm a guitarist, not a keyboard player, I uh, had a, um, a MIDI, a guitar with a MIDI uh, out, so it could control computer sounds, sampled sounds on the computer. That, you know, that's how, how all the sounds for the theme um, uh, got there. And I thought, what if I can find a sample sample of Ellen Pipes? Um, and I couldn't find any, but I, I came across this. That those Ellen Pipes that you can hear on that track is actually a, not a real instrument; it's a sampled instrument triggered uh, through uh, a, a keyboard. Strangely enough, it's not uh, actually played on the on the on the pipes there. So. Yeah, a little bit of um, trivia there about the, the music. Sequence of images there. Can you remember taking the, uh, uh, getting the oh. footage of the sea? The sea? Yeah. Which bit are you talking about? The very opening shot. It's the rolling waves. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, do you know, th that whole opening sequence for Ireland... Uh, is kind of lump in the throat stuff for me because there were mm -hmm. just so many lovely memories from that. Even though the yeah. weather was pretty crap a lot of the time, uh, it, it, yeah, just mm -hmm. it's just gorgeous. The Gap of Dunlow, oh, I love the Gap of Dunlow. It's something yeah. out of fairy tales. Well, I said that in the script, didn't I? I mean, it's just well, it that's, is. That's right. Actually, it, the more, majority of the shots in that opening thing uh, in the Gap of Dunlow, going up the. Yeah. We'll see more of that later we'll on. Tell, anyway. you a, tell you a funny story about that, that before we go on. That, uh, yeah. you, you just saw in that opening sequence there, there was a, a shot of a, uh, a horse-drawn carriage yes. trotting up uh, this 
lane uh, that just goes right the way up through the gap of Dunlow. And Mike and I were sitting at the top with that view down, and we saw a man and a woman from way back in the distance, way back. And the man was striding along uh, leisurely. The woman, she looked like something out of a Brian Froud movie. She was laid down with more rucksacks and bags and... She was the she was the pack mule. He was carrying nothing, and we watched them walk from the far distance because we'd clocked them through the lenses all the way up. At no point did he offer to carry anything. This poor woman <laughs> just bore this burden all the way up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, do you know what? That, that's something that's branded in my head, you know, that uh, that there are still men in this world who uh, who treat women like that. It was an utter disgrace. Uh, anyway, uh, are we done with... Um, we, it's going to be a long show, isn't it? If we <laughs> stop everything. I'm good, I'm good. Uh, a few minutes like this. Uh, okay, right, onward to... Castle Ruddery. You're, yes, you were about to say, until you see Castle Ruddery. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Ruddery. Even as stone circles go, this looks a bit of a mess. But underneath its tired appearance lies a site as complex as Stanton Drew or Brinkethley the. Known as a circle henge, the stones are surrounded by a raised bank and excavation showed it to have been built using soil from a ditch lying 24 feet outside the circle. And if that wasn't impressive enough, the excavations also revealed that the whole thing was surrounded by another bank which was supported by a wall of wooden posts. But even with all of that, it isn't what excited me about this site. Until I came here, I didn't know when or where I was going to talk about a particular obsession of mine. Drill holes. Oh, good. <laughs> Drill holes are a fairly common feature around megalithic monuments, and it's always intrigued me that no one really discusses them. One of the things that makes them so enigmatic is that in the main, they all appear to be worked with the same size of tool. They've been dismissed by some as being worked in the last few hundred years by stonemasons attempting to split and clear stones from the land, now, obviously, some of them could be exactly that, but drilled stones litter the landscape across Devon and Cornwall, with many of them still in positions which bear no relation to possible clearing. And even though these are atypical examples, here at Castle Ruddery, there's evidence that I have good reason to be excited by this apparently minor detail. Firstly, this stone, close to the white quartz entrance stones, is drilled to create an elegant curved edge. The other half of it lies outside the circle, but clearly has nothing to do with clearing. And secondly, but most significantly, this stone lying to one side of the circle has five carefully worked slots for who knows what purpose. The thing is that I know an identical stone lying in a similar position in another circle back on Dartmoor in southwest England at a place called Fernworthy. It would be extraordinary if these stones were not cut and positioned for the same purpose. So we may have another piece of evidence for a shared ritual or practice that we know nothing about. Do you want to just pause there? I am. That's somebody, oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed that I don't remember his name at the moment, but someone emailed me about two years ago uh, with uh, photographs of a stone that he had found uh, exactly like that, uh, that's in northern France. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so we now know of three stones that look like that. Mm. Um, don't know what they're for, but mm. um, but there you go. So, uh, Devon, Ireland, and northern France. Mm. Mm. Got a few suggestions in the uh, in the chat there. Mm. Uh, but, 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 uh, maybe to hold up my plan. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> do, do you know, the thing is, we should have a, a separate program about this because the, yeah. the, some of them are drill holes for splitting stones. No question. Some of them are. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, some of them definitely aren't. Mm. And uh, in fact, you saw there was a shot of a particular stone at uh, Chun Castle uh, near yeah. Chun Kuit. And, and that's a big stone that's just got loads of drill holes in it. And it's almost as if it was, I don't know, an apprentice stone. Teach somebody how to drill holes. Maybe that's what it was. Who knows? Uh, mm. But there's just loads of completely pointless holes in one stone. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and the thing is that, yes, you, you can suggest that, you know, maybe they were for upright planks. The thing is that the, the, they're not even enough. Uh, you know, you couldn't put a you couldn't put a, a, a plank of wood or a slat of wood into any one of those holes and it stand up on its own. Certainly, you couldn't do that. Uh, it would have to have some other means of support around it. But um, but yeah, it's, you know, answers on a postcard, please. Mm, <laughs> you know? mm, mm. Mm. Uh, Dan, uh, uh, where are you, Dan? Dan Breen. Uh, are we visiting Ireland again for Standing with Stones 2? Almost, certainly. Well, of course we are. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, It'll be a very different journey yeah. to this one. Um, it will. You know, we'll be, be causing trouble this time. We'll be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah <laughs> be because this this will yeah. be very much, you know, w one major thread of, of it certainly will be the arrival from the continent of the first... Yeah. Um, uh, farmer people um, so yeah. yes the how we tell that story will be very different from uh, you know yeah. just visiting um, megaliths um, cherish has said there are a lot up here i've forgotten cherish where are you um, us of the uh, very shortened memory <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> to forgive us i try to retain <laughs> the information i struggle um yeah, yeah. But is that the end of Castle Ruddery there? And that we finished C Castle Ruddery there. Uh, maybe. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I but aside from post, I, I know it's interesting that Castle Ruddery at the time in the script, you know, used as a jumping-off point to talk about uh, drill holes. But Castle Ruddery itself is worth a program on its own. It is. It's it an is. astonishing it, sight. It, uh, the, it, it's, a sh it's a shame that it's such a mess uh, in terms of uh, conservation yeah. uh, because if, it, you know, the fact that it's a circle henge and you can't see that when you're, mm. on, uh, when you're on the ground, you, it, you just can't see that at all. Where if any of you, have, uh, those of you that have seen uh, our film on the Devil's Quoits, for example, because Devil's Quoits is, is the best and the clearest illustration of what a circle hinge is about. You know, you've yeah. got a circle of stones that are uh, within the central plateau of a hinge. And that's what you're looking at at Castle Rudry. Well, okay, not that big. But that does give you an idea of quite how important this site must have been, mm. uh, particularly when it was constructed with timber revetment as well. I was going to uh, say. Know, they, they yeah. really did the number on this site, and mm. oh, for a time machine. Uh, for sure, yes. Mm. I, I can't think of uh, any other site where it's been confirmed that there was a timber re revetment around the what's a sen what was essentially a henge as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a henge. Yeah, a yeah, henge, yeah, henge a monument. Point. Yeah. Um, um, the only other place where there's I there's enormous think of, quartz uh, lumps as well at the yeah. uh, supposed entrance. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the only other place I can think offhand where there, um, my interpretation of the timber structures that they found at Durrington, I thought, well, that's revetment for building. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe. Don't know. Maybe. But yeah. that's, what, that's what I reckon, but I might be way off the mark. Didn't we do a special um, in a podcast about uh, Castle Rodery? I, I remember doing it in detail in one of our shows some time ago. Didn't we do a Monday Megalith on it? We did. And that is privy to you Patreon folk alone. If you yeah. dig down uh, on the page or do, do a search in, uh, in Patreon, I think you'll mm. find uh, there is a Monday Megalith um, on uh, mm. um, Castle Ruddery. Yeah. Mm. And if anybody else wants to see mm. that and all the other Monday Megaliths, there are 50, how many? 
are coming up to 57 or something ridiculous something like that yes monday Lots. megalis uh, on pa <laughs> patreon so that's one of the, those are one of, that's one of the perks um that you get mm. if you uh, join us on uh, on patreon so do have a look mm. shall i press mm. the play button i think so because uh, we we could have this conversation for a very long time lots of people we are, could. Uh, are talking yeah. about drills so yeah yeah right <laughs> let's move on oh Ireland has such a variety of megalithic monuments, some of them extraordinary for their audacity. Like Browns Hill Dolmen near Carlo in the southeast, its immense capstone is the <laughs> biggest in Europe and is estimated to weigh between 100 and 150 tons. That thing is massive. I, it, 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 it's so difficult to even get a sense of Others how massive like it is on the film. Yeah, for more. Oh, that's in their design. This looks more like a prehistoric diner to me. Still does to me, Fred Flintstone. Eight. It's not surprising that Ireland is so steeped in fairy lore. When you see sites like the, I, I have to say, Labakali. That's another socks blown off site, isn't it? Mm. The detail uh, in there, the, the the burial, the story of the witch, and the you know the, yeah. the possible, uh, and I've forgotten. But we did. It's, it's another Monday megalith we did, wasn't it? It's uh, buried we did. down there we on did. the Patreon page. Um, in fact, it, it has to be said, in fairness, that the bulk of the sites we visited through Ireland, yeah, uh, it's it's very gazetteer. You know, that yeah, we yeah. kind of bounce from site to site to site, deliberately showing the variation more than anything else. Yeah. The thing is that there is so much bizarre detail about so many of the sites that uh, that you know if you if you started to get into the folklore that clearly has nothing really to do with uh, well I say it has nothing to do with Anthony Murphy might disagree um, yeah. that the 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 folklore uh, has little to do with the actual construction uh, you know it, it, there there might be some strands that that go through history but generally speaking you know if, if you went into the folklore of every site then you'd never tell anybody anything about you know the, yeah. the, the real yeah. prehistory of the places you know, but so. the thing was with the the burials that are in Labakali tie up with the with the, the folklore, folklore. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 and we can't and, go into that uh, right now uh yes you're uh, absolutely right to point that out Rupert we did rather you know, dodge from place to place to place, and and it, we, yeah. you know, we'd still be there if we were dealing with all the stories, wouldn't, wouldn't we? Well, it's a Yay. shame we, we we didn't know Anthony Murphy at the time, and certainly when we when we do go to Ireland <laughs> yeah. next, we will be spending some time with Anthony because yeah. uh, his knowledge of the Irish myths and prehistory is just you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we should have had had him on tonight, but on second thoughts. A five-hour show wouldn't really be the thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. A Anthony is a good friend, but I'll tell you, and I'd say it to his face, and he knows it to be true, that Anthony could talk for Ireland. If talking was an Olympic sport, he'd win it hands down. And uh, it's good that he's a wonderful speaker, and you could genuinely listen to him without a trace of boredom. You could listen yeah. to him all day long. But as Michael said, this program would be very long. Uh, yeah, yeah, because he's uh, he, he's a fount of uh, knowledge about the myths. He myth. certainly well, is that. Go to Mythical Island. Do the search on Google. Find yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, if you've not uh, heard of Anthony side. before. He, you know, yeah. you'll you'll probably he's, leave us and go to him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a lovely bloke. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I'm pressing the play button. That thing. Circle of Ard Groom with its tall, oh. slender stones. It's really hard not to imagine it filled with equally tall and slender robed figures. <laughs> and utterly magical sites that, because of their settings chosen so carefully by their builders, seem to exist in another world altogether. Like Urach, standing timelessly on the banks of a lake, facing a waterfall which cascades down from the hills on the far shore. Do you want to say about Urach? Well, 
Well, I, I, if I say it now, because if we're going to have a watch party for the uh, uh, yeah. for the unseen footage, <laughs> then we're going to yeah, say it there. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. That that was a day down the Beer of Peninsula, was it not? It was. We could say something about this sequence. What, now or later? <laughs> yeah, all right, later. <laughs> Have a look at this. Here's a map of a tiny area in the south. <laughs> and I'm not even going to bother to open it all out. You look so young. <laughs> okay. <laughs> standing stone, standing stone. Boulder burial, stone circle, megalithic tomb, stone circle, megalithic tomb, boulder burial, cross inscribed stone, boulder burial, standing stone, standing stone, stone circle, stone circle, boulder burial, boulder burial, megalithic tomb, megalithic tomb, standing stone. A map of a tiny area in the north. Cairns, 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 Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, pick anywhere. Megalithic Tomb, Standing Stone, Standing Stone, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Megalithic Tomb, Standing Stone, Stone Circle, Stone Row, Megalithic Tomb. They are everywhere. Over the whole of Ireland, there are 1,500 megalithic sites. That's the big stone stuff. I don't want to keep tossing the list at you, but if we do count the cairns and the barrows and all that stuff as well, there are an incredible 5,000 recorded archaeological sites in County Sligo alone. Now the point is that here, as we saw on Dartmoor for example, there's been comparatively little building, so the traces of our ancestors are still clear to see. Now, even allowing for the variations in population density, if there are 5,000 sites in County Sligo alone, how many thousand must there have been across the whole of Britain and Ireland? Having seen from the maps just how many sites... You wish to say words. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, over the years, I got so many emails from people asking if I was just making that up. When I was pointing oh, at the map and really? saying standing stone, standing stone, standing stone, no, I was no, reading no, it no, no, off no. the map. It didn't make up a single one. Um, I don't blame people for asking the question, but mm, uh, mm. but yeah, it's because people just can't believe that there's really that much in the landscape. There is. Oh, and, and you will have pointed out just a fraction of what's there. Tiny, 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 tiny fraction. Tiny fraction. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. No, the point was uh, was well made, and it uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, no, they're all uh, there. Allergic, allergic to uh, bullshit. I wish I knew your name. Uh, the, what map is that? It's the the Irish version of the Ordnance Survey maps, and they're very fine maps too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they mark uh, every, absolutely uh, everything, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll. Um, in, in fact, if if um, if you let me know who you are, then I'll PM you some details or, or something. Yeah. Do we know what the population density was? We don't really. No. But, <laughs> no. I. Yeah. You know. I. I can look it up for you, but I. I yeah. don't know. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, that was not filmed in Ireland. No, it wasn't. That was, the, the bit uh, where the, the the car drives down past the stream that was that was uh, mm -hmm. in Ireland, but those woods um, were down in Dorset. Uh, yeah, Dor Devon. Devon. Yeah, and only a few yards away from where you nearly incinerated yourself filming the uh, the campfire indeed. bit. Yes, I indeed. Yeah, we. Did in fact, did we film well. that on the uh, same day? Later, the, later that same day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, later that night. Because um, the intention yeah. was to do that bit on the bonnet of the uh, Land Rover up on the, in the car park just below um, Maeve's Cairn, which we'll get to later. But we were interrupted by low-flying aircraft. It wasn't just a low-flying aircraft, was it? Because no, I mean, it was that was one thing. Choosing to do but it in then, the car park. <laughs> that was, yeah, first that was just so stupid. Or it, well, it, was, it was a triumph of optimism over common sense, basically. Uh, yeah. But uh, just, you know, we'd get halfway through it and somebody would drive in and park next to us and uh, we gave up in the end. 
and yeah. uh, and time wore on and wore on and wore on until <laughs> until it got to it was the last sequence that we actually filmed of the whole thing um, yeah. so yeah we did it in devon yeah mm. uh, do you want to say why we did it in devon you have well a... because I, I you know i have a caravan in devon uh, that i've had for 40 years or something and um uh and so when we go and just chill out by the sea and mm. so mike and i went down there when we were uh planning the 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 last filming aspects and and it just made sense the weather was dreadful so we mm. just waited for it to stop raining and uh and went and filmed it up the road in fact i mentioned this few well in the in the uh, watch party one we were talking about uh the the west country and we mentioned it then but um uh <laughs> It's just a beautiful and peaceful place near an Iron Age fortified camp that in May is an ocean of bluebells. I love that place. Um, but yeah, that's why we did it there. I knew that we would be able to drive into those woods and not see a living soul. Very good. Mission mm. accomplished. I shall uh, mm. press the play button again. Mm. landscape. Picking any road in the southwest seems to lead to something worth visiting. Here, the circle of Shrone Berain, with its tall portal stones, sits isolated off the road, almost oppressed by the ominous rock face behind it. It's amazing how the atmosphere of a place is so influenced by its position. In total contrast to Shrone Berain, the portal dolmen of Pulna Brone in County Galway stands proudly under open skies which seem to link it far more to the heavens than the earth. Uh, should we clear that up? Yeah. County Clare. Uh, yes, uh, Pulna Brown. I We really don't know how that slipped through the net. Um, yeah. be, because we're so thorough. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's quite possible... Um, I never checked back on the script. It, it is quite possible that it was right on the script and I just talked nonsense when it came out in front of the camera and Mike didn't notice. It's, that's you quite may have possible. had a brain fart um, on the day. Who knows? I may well have done. Um, uh, but funnily enough, only in uh, in how many years is it now? Um, 14. However, 14 years. Something that like that, only, yeah. Only three people have pointed that out one of whom pointed it out today, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so, in, so in 14 years, only two people have pointed that out. And one of them was some ranty woman from Ireland who, uh, who emailed me. Uh, this was before we had our YouTube channel. This was when, right, uh, yeah. when the, the film was being serialized on cable. And so she sought out my private email address to send me a ranty email saying that how sloppy I was and just the scantest piece of research would have shown that uh, that it was in County Clare. Um, and it was, it was like she dismissed the entire film on the back of one cock-up. So, well, thanks, Mrs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're forgiven. Um, yeah, hey. <laughs> ah. I didn't care. It's not like I was going to take her home to meet my mum, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Paul Nebron. <laughs> Earlier, I mentioned that there are 5,000 recorded archaeological sites. Oh, sorry. Sites Actually, I'm camps. sorry. It was, we can't skip. This, that's a ridiculous example of us skipping through. And anyway, there's one more thing to mention about Paul, Paul Nebron. Uh, that's uh, crazy. Only that, pardon? Only one <laughs> thing to mention about Paul Nebron. Or do you mean from the filming? Oh, from from the filming. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, no, I'm talking about first of all having skipped past it so quickly when it's a, when it's one of the most important it's sites in Ireland. Uh, yeah, uh, on so many uh, levels, you know, from a dating point of view, from uh, the burials that were were found there, uh, and the tale of life that seems to have been extrapolated from uh, examining of the, the remains that have been uh, excavated uh, from that site. Um, mm. Quite, quite extraordinary. In fact, they peripherally came into the news recently. Maybe we'll wait until we get to Newgrange for that. I don't know. 
Um, but uh, they were in, uh, the, the remains from Paul Nebron were included in the same study that found uh, the incestual relationship uh, between um, two of the burials in Newgrange itself. In the same study, mm. um, yeah, it, yeah it was there, included. there was kinship. There was kinship yeah. with the mm. uh, uh, with the burials at uh, at Paul mm. but it, you know, it is a perfect example, though, of you know when we've said before that if we were making Standing with Stones one today, we would not be making Standing with Stones one. You know the the knowledge that we've gained over the last years, uh, we just we could not have romped through the sites the way that yeah. we did you know even because can know, i even just hold, we hold on a second uh, yeah. Rupert, uh can I ask um um i'm going to ask uh sibylla if, if there's some silliness going on in the chat i i haven't uh noticed um sibylla can i make you a, a moderator uh if uh, if anybody needs to be booted that's causing distraction is somebody uh, being a pain I don't know. Uh, I, I'm making you a moderator, Sibylla. Do with your powers uh, <laughs> what you will. Uh, no, no, no pressure. You don't have to do anything, but you have powers now. So uh, if, if you can use them. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we, we can say to everybody else that if somebody is being a pain, then just uh, don't we have, commute with the madness. We have zero can. tolerance. Yeah. 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 Life's too short. Um, um Okay, sorry, Paul Nebron. Um Yeah, uh, apologies to Paul Nebron. I interrupted you. You were on a flow, Rupert. I do beg your pardon. Not really. I, you know, I think you know. It's fair to say that we will re redress a lot of these imbalances. Uh, you know, in due course, whether it's in standing with stones two or not is another thing. You know, we that we have a lot of issues with um, uh, certain aspects of Irish archaeology. Uh, but but also the fact that th there is so much complication in some of those sites that Paul Nebron, you know, deserves a documentary all of its own. Um, you know, so in some ways it was, it, we had to just skirt through everything. Sibylla, don't boot Lazzie, don't boot Lazzie. <laughs> <laughs> or David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be good. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we would, we would have ended up with a ten-hour film, you know, if we'd yeah, yeah. Uh, done justice to every site. So, <laughs> but I think, I think uh, at that time of passing through, there was a certain amount of it hold, have to hold our hands up. There was a certain amount of ignorance in, involved there. A huge it, amount of ignorance, hands in yeah. the air for that. Uh, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, what we've what we've learned since then. I'm glad we didn't know it back then because. I I think we would have been so daunted by what we were trying to achieve. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> we know, wouldn't have set out. It would have been colossal. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now standing on the threshold of standing with stones too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's says I don't want to boot anybody, and uh, and A to B says it's been quite cordial. Well, that's all right then. That's all right then. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Yeah, nothing seems to be kicking off, so that's all right. Um, no, but apologies to Paul Nebron for not doing it justice in the film. Uh, but another apology to Paul Nebron is that when we drove through, because Paul Nebron's not far from the main road up, up there. Do you remember the camper van? The broken oh, exhaust? We, yeah, we, yeah, we broken exhaust. We sounded like a whole army of Harley Davidsons going through. <laughs> oh, that, that, no, that's a whole, an army of Harley Davidsons, as long as they, you know, pass through. That's quite a, an amazing sound. This was a disgusting <laughs> sound. All right, it sounded like a broken Spitfire. A broken that's Spitfire <laughs> going up the whole of the west coast of Ireland. It, it was, was so loud. It was crazy. We had had it fixed in um, Killarney, actually. Mm. But uh, no, we, we uh, yeah, you could hear us coming for miles and going for miles, <laughs> the, the camper van. Yeah. We got it fixed in Sligo eventually. Be glad to hear. Shall I move on? Yeah, go on. Okay, Happy okay. days. <laughs> <laughs> well, out of all those places in Sligo, there's one area which stands out from all the rest. Yeah, we seem to have raced up the west coast all the way to Sligo now, yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. 
This is Carrowmoor, Ireland's largest megalithic cemetery. It's amongst the oldest and largest megalithic cemeteries in Europe, and the dates here are staggering. Earliest remains have been dated back to around 9,600 years ago, and the earliest megalithic tombs here to about 7,000 years ago. I'm just going to stop there, uh, what you just said about the dating. That has to be corrected. Um, because that were based on a, on a, on some research that is now very much questioned. I mean, the the Caramore, uh, Megalithic Cemetery is old, but it's not that old. Um, well, it was based on charcoal accounts. remains. Um, yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I mean, what we do know is that there was Mesolithic activity going back that far, whether yeah. it relates to uh, the, the stone building. Stuff is, yeah, that, is, 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 yeah, it's very questionable. But there yeah. were people there. That's the important thing. Um, yeah. it's some, do you know what? Something that I'm ashamed to say I hadn't actually noticed it before. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of the um, the tombs, uh, the megalithic tombs at Caramore and around Caramore that they are remarkably like the uh, Danish Hunabedden uh, yeah. from, uh, <clears throat> from the Netherlands. Remarkably similar. Mm. So that's mm. something to uh, maybe have a look at for Standing with Stones 2 correlations sure. there. Anyway, you're just about mm. to sit on one of them. Uh, yes. <laughs> so to put that in perspective, that's a very, very long time before any of the great pyramid building in Egypt. You see that lump up there behind me? That's not an array. It's the sacred mountain that dominates the surrounding lowlands. And you see that bump on the very top? That's where we're going next. <laughs> Nopnare is not alone amongst the surrounding mountains in having a huge cairn at its summit. But this colossal monument is called Maeve's Cairn, and there really was an Iron Age Queen Maeve who could be buried here. Even though the, the cairn itself that. predates Maeve by a couple <laughs> of thousand years, tombs were commonly reused for long periods, so it is possible. Irish mythology tells of people who came from over the sea and noble figures like the kings of Tara, the kings of Tuatha de Danann, and here, Sorry. Queen Maeve. <laughs> Leave me alone. Does lie here. They must have been held in the very highest esteem to be buried at such a site. Yeah, it's an amazing view, isn't it? That's one of the most spectacular views that were ever, ever attained uh, during the whole of the filming, that view down the, uh, the west coast. And, uh, well, Can you imagine just... doing it now in 4K? Well, must, must, got to do it We'd again. We probably Clear. mostly agree yeah. that man is an animal trying to solve the problems of living comfortably with his environment. And you probably hear people say quite often that man no longer lives in harmony with his environment. But actually, that's a mistake. Man lives in total harmony with his environment. He just oh, happens to have created here. a completely artificial one over which he has far greater control. The accurate thing to say would be that urbanized man no longer lives in harmony with nature. Now, this is essentially how we lost our connection with our ancestors. The stories and myths passed down for thousands of years ceased to have meaning for a people so far removed from nature. Now in Britain, the combination of Roman invasion and centuries of religious dogma destroyed or absorbed, sometimes confused, that earlier heritage, as is so clear to see at places like Knowlton Henge, for example, or as Bitty Cunvin. Adopt it into the present and it ceases to have the past that you so wish to hide. It only takes a few centuries of being told how and what to think and believe for almost all traces of a word of mouth tradition to disappear. So cultural heritage had to start all over again. The problem now 
is that our artificial environment maintains that separation from our ancestors. And the speed of change through our technological advances means that few figures in history hold their meaning. Who were the mythical kings of Tara, the kings of Tuatha de Danann? And we know a man who knows the answer to that. Cling <laughs> to the heroic tales of King Arthur, of Robin Hood, because they remind us of the values that we hold dear. Love, honour, bravery, nobility. But historical figures don't fit so easily into an ever-evolving culture. There's really only one way to find modern-day heroes who will fit into a culture undergoing constant change. We create celebrities. Nicely put, young man. True thing, true thing. I yeah. apologise for my Irish pronunciations. Anthony, I've seen that you've joined us. Anthony, I'm sorry for my Irish pronunciations. <laughs> <laughs> but the very things you were saying there just pro pro shows how incredibly valuable what Anthony is doing is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, totally. you talk about the dis disappearance of, of uh, the oral uh, tradition. And, uh, you know, we owe thanks to whoever the monks were that uh, uh, transferred uh, the Irish myth to, uh, to the written la language. Um, and, you know, that gives us um, access to, and, and particularly people like Anthony, who sort of really bring them to life and make mm. the connections. You know, uh, teach us how uh, the myth is not uh, eth ethereal nonsense, but actually, you know, is a glue that uh, holds what we're looking at there in that very picture. Maeve's Cairn, she's there, yeah. you know, yeah. cattle raids and yeah. all. Yeah. Um, just extraordinary. So, yeah. uh, as I say, our hats off to uh, uh, Anthony. Uh, yeah once more and thanks for joining us tonight great to see you yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. see what wh where anthony uh, scores uh, significantly high over us is that he's got a good memory <laughs> <laughs> he's young <laughs> yeah. whip, yeah. whip a snapper <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shall I yeah, continue? Sorry, David. yeah yeah go on <laughs> <laughs> Ah, good microphone, the road. It's interesting NT that as you move north through Ireland, the sites seem to become grander and more sophisticated. Still in County Sligo, the Court Cairn of Creevy Keel is one of the finest examples of this type of structure. The open area has a puzzling circular construction with its own passage entrance, perhaps a kind of pulpit where the priest could make a grand entrance when the congregation was settled in the wider area of the court. Do you want to pause there? Yes, I will. Beyond this lies what... Uh, that, uh, it seems, is actually related to iron smelting. That's that wow. structure there. Wow. I was just going to say, you know, I, I hadn't thought about it really since, uh, you know, filming and, and making that very light reconstruction there. Mm. That Those bits don't f belong in the same time frame at all, do they? No, you've no. you've got uh, you've got a original mound, obviously. You know, with all the the burial chambers, that's come away, and it's been uh, used later on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In its bare, in its bare bone f feet, uh, function, uh, in its bare bone yeah. um, uh, existence. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? What you're saying, Rupert? Yeah. Well, it, it, it's the fact that we have so many unknown features of so many places. And uh, uh, Condide has said uh, holy iron smelting. Well, yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, but nevertheless, uh, iron and, smelting. And, which... and, and Jez has said, tell us more. The sad fact is, Jez, that I can't tell you more. Um, <clears throat> this was something that I read and I haven't gone into it in detail at all because it's just yet another detail that uh, mm -hmm. you know we scribble down and just you know keep it there as a back note. Uh, but uh, in similar structures that are um, 
What are we laughing at? Well, yeah. Matt says it's Ireland's real Wayland Smithy. <laughs> Oh, what a no, brain. You're just causing trouble. We'll get Sibylla on to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, no, I can't tell you more about it other than I, I read that that was an interpretation of it. And when you look at other sites that are known to relate to iron smelting, you certainly can see the correlation. And, uh, and without that correlation, it just seems the most bizarre structure hmm. uh, to have incorporated in the site. You know, um, uh, so yeah, that's all I can tell you. I just thought it was a, a, a <laughs> worth the interjection. Better carry yeah. on though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just have to say, Anthony knocks us into a cocked hat because apparently he's come just come off doing a live from Newgrange. You did a you did a live from Newgrange. What are you tonight? Like? He he just you know tosses off a. Uh, a live show from Newgrange and, and, and comes and joins us. We are. Well, bless you for joining us, mate. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah. we're, the <laughs> truth is, we're, we're, uh, Mike and I are kind of in awe of Anthony because I think he does something, uh, it, something with the, the quantum field. He manipulates time because I don't know how he fits <laughs> into any one day what he does. I think, there are, I think there are more than one of him personally. <laughs> Yeah. Onward, onward. Yeah, onward. <laughs> the covered tomb itself, still guarded by imposing portal stones. Big place, isn't it? Big one. Blimey. It's huge. <laughs> Big more. Near Londonderry, <laughs> Surrey seems more Baymore. like a shell of yeah, Bronze yeah, Age yeah. architectural design. The circles here are laid out in pairs, each pair having its own cairn and approaching stone rows. The overall sense of establishment, refinement of old rituals, is almost tangible, especially at the most famous group of Ireland's prehistoric monuments. Before now, we go to Brunneboing, that's just uh, a, a word for, for Baymore there, uh, that there's, again, far more to this site than meets the eye. Again, we did a Monday Megalith um, some time ago on, on Patreon. Um, we did. I just wanted to say, I think, and I don't have the maps, the plans available to me. I think there's more work going on at Baymore um, quite rec recently. I think they're extending. I believe there um, is, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't what answer, I know. Answer but I'm wondering if they're extending under, uh, under the rough uh, gorse and uh, grass um, to the, uh, which I can't remember which direction it is. But I... Uh, suspect that there's something that, that, that there's that we're at the terminal end of a cursus that extends away. That's just my two cents worth. Um, mm. But it, th there seems to be there are two or three or four lines that extend away, whether they're ditches or lines of uh, uh, of stones, mm. and they disappear into the uh, uh, in, into the untended gorse and heather at the periphery of, of, of the site, you know, as if they're mm -hmm. heading off um, into the distance. I, I just wonder how long those lines extend and whether there's a, something like a, a, a cursus there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much more to say there, but mm, mm, I, sh I shall be fascinated to see what uh, comes out of further excavations there. Shall we proceed yeah. uh, to Newgrange? and Newgrange in the Boyne Valley. Sadly, Douth is little more than a ruin, long since ravaged by quarrying. But Nowth and Newgrange hold a level of artistry which leaves you speechless. These Neolithic masterpieces show a level of sophistication which is impossible to take in on a single visit. Both Newgrange and Nowth are colossal monuments in themselves, 
each surrounded by numerous chambered tombs. Each also has its own crowning feature. Newgrange is meticulously built and aligned so that its gently rising passageway coincides with the angle of the sun's rays when they shine through the opening above the entrance. At the winter solstice, the sunlight reaches up the passageway to illuminate the central chamber. Nowth is notable for an entirely different reason. The whole site is adorned with decorated stones. In fact, Nowth alone accounts for over a quarter of all the known megalithic art in Europe. I'll let it run to the end now, Rupert, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I couldn't leave Ireland without saying something else about Newgrange. From up here, it does look spectacular, but actually it's both a marvel and a monstrosity. Inside it's original, it's an awesome display of Neolithic sophistication. Creating that internal space that's only illuminated by the sun at winter solstice has to have been done with a fantastic understanding of astronomy. It really is worth a visit. But outside, it's a lie. Neolithic man would never have built that monster. That gleaming white quartz facade conceals a concrete wall, the only way that that design would stay standing. And all around, above the curbstones, there are concrete plinths that support the weight of the mound. Even the entrance, it's designed to take huge numbers of visitors. The court would never have looked like that. It's a 1970s piece of nonsense. Come and marvel at the inside, but ignore the outside. It's just not true. <laughs> and that, um, my friends, is... Um was drawing to the end, well, it says end of part one. Uh, that's from the days of the DVD when it was on uh, on two, D mm -hmm. two DVDs. You had to take out that DVD and put the next one in to carry on. Don't you Back like in tech? the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, next time uh, we'll be on the Isle of Man. But, uh, yeah, thoughts yeah. Um, so many years on about that uh, sequence, Rupert. Oh, well, I completely stand by Newgrange, yeah, uh, yeah. everything uh, we said about Newgrange. Uh, you know, I think one of the most ridiculous things <clears throat> uh, is that if you go to, uh, to Nowth, uh, uh, that you can see a whole load of quartz on the ground that shows that it was a gleaming white floor of a forecourt. Um, mm. And you, you put that in, uh, in Newgrange, uh, you know, giving it a beautiful white pavement if you like makes a lot more sense mm. than just that thing that couldn't stay up any other way if you google uh, newgrange excavations you can see loads of photographs from uh, from before it was restored and you know you get a much better idea of it looking like uh, <laughs> any number of other mounds frankly Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's not to detract from the skill of the builders, because as I said no, no, no. in, uh, uh, you know, in in the in the film there, that the, you know, you you, you think about it that when they when they built, and not just Newgrange, you know, you you look at the you know the sites in Scotland or or wherever they are, you know, any site that is designed to align to the solstice sun, that. Uh, you know, half of the time in Britain, the weather is appalling. You've got no guarantee that the light's going to be there at all. So you couldn't just build it knowing that it was going to be in the right place. Uh, you know, you had to have done that prep work over generations, knowing that <laughs> this is the way it was going to line up. You know, there, there was just so much experience 
went into all that construction, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm also, the, the, there are so many things about Newgrange that the fact that when they restored the uh, 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 the passage and uh, and they it was when they uh, pulled stones out to tidy things up before they put them back and they found that there were more carvings and engravings on the backs of the stones that were pushed into the passageway which showed you quite clearly that these were reused stones. They came from another site, Lord knows where. They came from another older site. So we have no idea how long the rock art sort of culture, if you like, was in buildings uh, in the area. We have no idea. No idea where they came from. Mm. Um, and if you thought Rupert was uh, scathing in his analysis of the exterior <laughs> of, of New Grange, uh, check out what Francis Pryor says about it. In Britain, oh, does, does Francis go heavier than Takes me? Takes it apart, yes. Does he? Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Good man. Good uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks yeah. absolutely, uh, absolutely splendid. Um, but uh, no, no, we don't buy it. <laughs> However, mm. uh, one of our wonderful experiences, I mean, the whole of Ireland was a wonderful experience for us, wasn't it? But exemplified by the wonderful cooperation of the people around on, on the ground. <laughs> At the time, uh, I can't remember the name of the, uh, is, is it the Irish sort of National Trust or, or the, 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 the well, what are they department? Called, are you still there? Do you remember what they're called? Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't dare ask for permission or indicate to anybody that we were, we were filming in the, uh, you know, the, the no. well-known uh, sites of Ireland because we'd have been shafted, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> told where to go. Um, yeah. Uh, so we kept yeah. ourselves uh, under the radar. Um, you know, when when Office when, of public work. When the, when well the, done. Well done. When the, when the camper uh, exhaust wasn't drawing attention to us. Yeah. <laughs> but however, both uh, we had this experience both at Caramore um, Megalithic Cemetery and in the New Grange uh, complex. Where the, it was at now, wasn't it? It was yeah. at Nouth when we got in there, yeah. Uh, uh, but also at Caramore, you remember? But it was the, the, yes. the same phrase, the, the guy, and you'll have to forgive me because I've got to do the accent because it doesn't make any sense, <laughs> you know. We were look because we, we couldn't get in. The, was, the gates were locked, you know, both places. And we, oh no, come all this way, and, and yes. we couldn't possibly, you know, get official permission. And at both places there was a concierge of some sort, you know, and we told them our story. And, all right, all right, boys. <laughs> I didn't see you, and you didn't see me. You didn't Away see you me. Go. <laughs> yeah, but at, at, at now it was uh, it was the uh, the gardener, for want of a of a better word, the groundsman. He was actually oh, there yeah, with yeah. his wheelbarrow. Yeah, um, but in both and instances, he just left the, gate the open uh, for us. The yeah. padlocks were unlocked, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and we had uh, no, I didn't nobody see else you, about. You didn't <laughs> see me. <laughs> <laughs> Away you go, lads. Mm. Yeah, thank you, whoever you were. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, uh, I, what else is there to say except um, do we'll do better next time. There's so much, so much, and with you know, I'm sure with uh, Anthony. Will you be on our film, mate? Are you there? <laughs> we'll buy dinner. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure. And uh, if you could uh, yeah. discover a few more henges by then as well, that'd be good. Yeah. Now, Martin, <laughs> we, we will be in touch with you, Martin. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, for surely. Sure we will. Um, uh, yeah, I know you're on Facebook. I'm sure we must, I must have your email address somewhere, must not mm -mm. I? PM me or something anyway. Mm. We should be in contact. Um, Something to, yeah, to we'll bear in mind, you know, thinking about uh, us doing Standing with Stones 2. And uh, Standing with Stones 2 was us, you know, lurching from site to site. You know, it was, it was about the visit. It was about the journey and the, and the visit. Standing with Stones 1, you mean? Standing with Stones 1 uh, was. Um, Standing yeah. with Stones 2 will be m the story of the people. So we won't be lurching from site to site in quite the same way. 
that's no. lurching probably yeah. but not yeah. in the lurching same yeah. yeah so it, it won't be an excuse for visiting as many sites as we can it's an excuse for telling a story and if those sites you yeah. know contribute to that story that's that's when they'll get uh, included um, mm. so there'll be many places that weren't in the standing with stones one um, because they tell more of that uh, that that human story and of course yeah. we, we will be revi revisiting uh, places um, but, but you know as, as I've said or, or we have said previously you know that um, the uh, the biggest problem we had um, in the preparation of standing with stones one mm. was what to leave out mm. because we had made this this huge list of the sites that we wanted to include but obviously you know it had to be finite and uh, we have a similar problem with this in that there are there are topics and themes that we uh, that we want to weave in but it's mm. finding the way to get the information across in the clearest way possible mm. and uh, that's the hard bit. That's what's really going to take the time up front is to establish mm. how the story is going to go. Mm. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> it'll be a visual feast anyway. Michael's filming it. <laughs> yeah, we'll do, yeah, we'll do the we'll do the visual feast bit as as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, mm. sort of thoughts at the moment are. Do we upgrade the gear to, uh, I mean, it's pretty good as as it is, but, you know, for future proofing, <laughs> do we need to do it? And, yeah, don't know. I, I, for, I don't you can't know. get it. It's one of those things yeah. of, you know, there's no point shooting anything better than 4K. Um, no. Because uh, <laughs> live stream it. <laughs> well, actually, uh, joking <laughs> aside, live stream it. We will. That's the fantastic thing. That uh, as we are out and about, uh, we'll be mm. so, be able to be inclusive about what we're doing and where we are, and and, and there'll be a whole. Mm. You know, it'll generate uh, more hours in live stream and and uh, well, that's and, certainly and, true. and vlogging. Yeah. Uh, bits that the more hours in that than it will in the final yeah. product i expect if we get our, our patrons are on patreon uh you know they'll, 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 be, they'll be they'll be getting a ton of stuff that um that doesn't yeah. go out elsewhere yeah. certainly that's true um how well you know me uh, candide uh, what did candide say <laughs> boys need to new toys well do you know it keeps you young um <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's it's a hard call, really, because the, I personally I think that the biggest reason for upgrading any tech is hmm. because you know the tech that we've got is you know it's a top rate kit for producing the goods. The question is, can you buy something new that weighs half as much? Because when you're yeah. travelling all over the place and carrying loads of gear, uh, it just makes such a difference when you can reduce the load. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, gonna a we're gonna end up with a flash mob at every site who said that <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> oh, dear. that would be funny that would uh, be funny. drones and, and, uh, and not a little inconvenient but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah obviously we didn't have uh drones um, back in uh 2007 they weren't even, they weren't even 2006 no, no, we no. were we were travelling the landscape, wishing that we had the budget for a helicopter. Yeah, uh, drones were just not a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Robin actually puts his finger right. What I was going to say. It's not about the resolution. It's about the dynamic range. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, and uh, do you know, what? People... I was looking when when we had the sequence. Uh, you know, the, the sequence at Ard Groom. Mm. I don't know how many of you folks remember that. A uh, little bit where I, I, oh, I yes. said that the stones looked like uh, looked like uh, tall shrouded figures or something like that, <clears throat> but it was the weather conditions with the kit that we had that the the uh, the the landscape is well the su the sky certainly is completely bleached out, and mm. with uh, with better dynamic range, oh, God that that would have been just beautiful. Oh, uh, and that is my temptation because uh, I know even with the kit there is be there are, there is kit with much better. 
I mean, I could yeah. upgrade that camera, actually. I can increase it to 13 stops. Oh, we're getting technical. This is wrong. Wrong. How wrong? But anybody like Robin who knows this stuff, if the, if you go through Standing With Stones... Uh, oh, right, your battery's gone. Here, folks. Uh, <laughs> yes, hold on a second while I just... Stick if you go on. through Standing With Stones with a critical eye, you can tell where the sky's blown out, or even... R Rupert's skin blown out at, at some points, you know, and all the <laughs> all the blacks are crushed, or there's you know, just uh, from a, a technical critical point of view, you could pull it apart. But um, uh, you know, it seems to hold together with the story. That's the, the important thing. But I, I do I just crave being able to uh, you know pull it together. Stone is you don't get an impression of stone until you're right close up, and that's why the different qualities of stone that's what in, so it becomes tactile if you get the the you know the exposure right and you get the light right and you you've got the 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 right camera you, you can almost feel that stuff you know that's uh, that's that's kind of also what uh, turns me on I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping that one of the other fundamental <clears throat> differences with uh, mm. Uh, with standing with his stones too, is that we will have more flexibility with um, w with time. Mm. That uh, you know, if the lighting is appalling, that we can just wait for the right conditions. Mm. Um, I mean, it might not be possible, but certainly mm. there were times when we were the Pontypridd rocking stone. <laughs> there were mm -hmm. times when we were uh, shooting in appalling conditions that we had no choice because you know we we were on a mission we had to have this completed in five and a half weeks or whatever you know that particular leg that kind of thing mm. um who said but, that uh, anyway patreon what so there's flint steven 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 is commented on uh, on patreon just one moment the flint mace head from Nauf is worth yeah. including. If it's got uh -huh. a story to tell that links up and uh, yeah can be linked into stuff, ab the absolutely, thing. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's people praising cannons. Yes, I'm looking at you through a 1DX Mark II, and I love it. I've been using Canon for 40 years and uh, won't change. Yeah, but do you know yeah, what? It's... I've got a lens over there. I've got a lens that's oh, nearly 40 years old, and I can still put it on my newest cameras. And, yeah, perfect. Yeah, we're going off into the long grass here, as far, you know, as, far as to toys for boys and all the rest of it. Um, deepest apologies. The important thing is what appears in the film, what you get to see at the end of the day. <laughs> Who cares about the process? Yes. Yes. I'm What's running the best out camera of... that you can have? The one that's in your hand at this moment. It doesn't matter. That is correct, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm, I don't think there's anything else. Are there any last questions that anybody's got about what we've just, uh, what we've just seen? Um, next time, of course, uh, is Isle of Man and North of England, isn't it? That's uh, what the next section yes. is. Um, isn't it great that Isle of Man got included? I mean, it wouldn't have got included if it had not been for the fact that I was born there, and you know the place better than I do, actually. Yeah. But uh, that's for know, another time. Funny, it, it, is for, it is for another time, yes. I mm. certainly did know a lot of the archaeology on the Isle of Man, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's See, a request for you to play us out on the drums. It's not going to happen. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're plugged into earphones. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I might... Um, I actually haven't had a kit, uh, seeing as we're talking about it, I haven't had an actual kit in my possession for 30 years. And so I'm not going to play anything to anybody until I've got my chops back. I used to yeah, be an yeah. absolute demon, and it's not like riding a bike. Uh, <laughs> I understand. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Kevin mm. uh, got to the Isle of Man two years ago with Neil, with Neil MacDonald. Oh, do you know is. Yeah. what? Yeah. I do like Neil, super chat. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Neil McDonald, folks. He uh, he runs um, megalithic tours all over the place. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but 
No, well, you'll see. You'll see next uh, next week. Uh, the yeah. Isle of Man is uh, is a magical let us, spot. Let us not mm. preempt ourselves. Mm, and with indeed. that, we will say: if you've enjoyed being here, if you're new to us, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It really helps the channel to grow. And uh, mm -hmm. gosh, uh, it's 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 pertinent now, isn't it? We've got a sense of of, of purpose uh, going on. Met on, on, met on another yeah. mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and uh, if you please do check out uh, our Patreon page at um, patreon.com slash the prehistory guys. Okay, that's it. We're yeah. done. Uh, this has been, as again, I've so enjoyed it and uh, we look forward to next time. Yeah. Goodbye from Thank me. Thank you, folks. And it's goodbye from me. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.